This week we're celebrating Agneta's 73rd birthday. There will be a dedicated video for it tomorrow evening. But today I want to go back in time 50 years ago to 1973 and explore Agneta's life at that time and the fascinating music that she recorded and produced that year. Our focus will be on this album and the new songs that came with it. It's only a few songs, but they were never released as part of a regular studio album, so I think some of these songs might tend to be overlooked sometimes. And even more so, in my estimation, I think these are some of Agneta's very best solo recordings, and they seem to be quite important in context of her legacy, almost like an artistic bridge to all of her subsequent work as an independent artist, especially her fifth album from 1975. So let's take a look at Agneta's road of becoming an independent artist. Hey, hey! Hey, hey! So, just recently we had a deep dive into 1973 in context with the making of ABBA's debut album Ring Ring. The events of ABBA's beginning would intertwine several times with Agneta's own career. She was now married to Björn and mother of her first child Linda. By that time, Agneta had released four solo albums between 1968 and 1971. Her role as an artist evolved from album to album. She wrote more and more songs by herself. In the course of 1973, she wrote at least two songs for her upcoming fifth album. One of them was included earlier on ABBA's first album as an English version called Disillusion. The other one was written shortly after Linda was born and would become the closing track on Agneta's next album. It was a song about her daughter dealing with all the fears going with it, especially in hard times marked by war. At the end of 1973, Agneta's first compilation album brought together her greatest hits and own compositions from all four of her previous solo albums. But she also included two songs from standalone singles from the previous year and even recorded two brand new songs for this compilation, which were also released as a single to promote the album. And all of these recordings became crucial for Agneta's future. The two singles from 1972 were both produced by Björn and have Sven Olaf Waldorf's orchestration, both a consistent continuation from Agneta's fourth album. The first single contains two songs from the musical Jesus Christ Superstar, in which she played the part of Maria Magdalena in early night while were in the studio to record their first official song together, People Need Love. Agneta's second single from 1972 was recorded in September, just one week before ABBA had their next recording session. She wrote the music to both songs on her own. The A-side was co-written by Björn, who was producer again on both songs, and Benny played piano and sang backing vocals on both tracks. The lyrics for the B-side were written by Kenneth Jerestad, who was the brother of Ted Jerestad and who wrote lyrics for his compositions. In 1974, Agneta would record an English version of the A-side called Here for Your Love. It was her first solo recording in English and a collaboration between Agneta and Bosse Kalgren. He would become very important for her next solo album. Both had already worked together on Agneta's previous solo album for some of the songs and they would develop a concept for her upcoming fifth album. But for that album, Agneta's one and only solo recordings from 1973 were another milestone. The two new songs, which were part of that Greatest Hits album and released as a single, were not written by herself, but this time, for the very first time, she would be producing her own recordings. Working with Björn and Benny before, and especially with Michael B. Tretto as well, gave her the best possible insights and experience. And again, the inception of ABBA with Ring Ring earlier that year somehow crossed paths with Agneta's recording career again. One of the two songs was her Swedish version of a song co-written by none other than Neil Sedaka. Earlier that year, he co-wrote the English lyrics for ABBA's Ring Ring, and now Agneta chose one of his brand new songs, Our Last Song Together, and recorded a Swedish version for her Greatest Hits album. Neil Sedaka happens to be one of Agneta's most favorite artists, an idol and great inspiration for her just one decade earlier. Agneta's version and own production have that perfect mix of celebration and melancholia and a wonderful sound balancing the various instruments and vocals from each other with a superb vocal performance from Agneta. The A-side is as impressive in performance and sound. The title translates to a song about sadness and joy. Agneta's voice is so clear 
she delivers a heartbreaking performance and the chorus has many layers of vocals. The soundscape of all of these voices is very delicate and those high harmonies in the background go straight to your heart. All of this is beautifully mixed within a marvelous orchestration from Sven Olof Waldorf. The song became one of her most successful hits on the Swedish radio charts where it would stay for 14 weeks, topping the charts on number one for seven weeks. Considering that this is Agneta's very first production on her own, is absolutely mind-blowing and both songs are two of my top favorites of hers. The concept of this Greatest Hits compilation from 1973 and the combination of these two new songs at the end with two of her 1972 singles is a beautiful conclusion to her first five years as a recording artist and all of it an important precursor for things to come. Her next album was produced entirely by Agneta on her own. The experience from the two recordings she produced in 1973 were certainly an important step for that. Let me know what you think of these songs and Agneta's singles from 1972. Listen to these gorgeous recordings. Tomorrow we will go back in time to 1950 and celebrate Agneta's 73rd birthday. Alright, until then, hey Hey